what we're going to do, we will be slicing through those three members. And we'll be looking at the right hand side when we come to do um, our <coughs> calculations. Therefore, I, I need to know AL. So like the method of, um, method of joints, you need to know all of the external forces first. So I, I'll need to know what AL is. So to, do, to work out what AL is, I'll... Reaction. Anyway, and if I take moments around A <coughs> equals zero, say that everything going round <coughs> anti clockwise is going to be positive. Right, so I've got I've got this minus one times by, so the six panels at five meters each. So minus one times by five. Um, <coughs> minus five, this one here, times by five. Then I'll move on to the next ones. So it's minus one times by 10, minus five times by 10. So I'm just working along all of my forces. Minus one times by the distance, 15. Minus five times by 15. Minus one times by 20. There's a minus one times by the distance, 25. And then at the very end, we've got plus um, 30 times by AL. All of that equals <coughs> all of that equals zero. Off the top of my head, <coughs> AL equals um, 7.5 kilonewtons. It's positive, therefore I've guessed the correct direction for the arrow for AL. We will work if you well if, if you were to work out what AY is, which we don't need for this question, but to find AY, what we could do, we could do the sum of forces and vertical equals zero and we've got one two three four five five one kilonewton we've got one two three five kilonewtons minus our al which is 7.5 <coughs> Uh, sorry, minus minus a y equals zero. A y is twelve point five kilonewtons. And then you can do a check. You do the check by doing the sum of moments around L equals zero. If you did the sum of moments around L, you'll end up finding AY again, and that will just confirm if it's 12.5, then you know that your reaction calculations are correct. 
Once you've got your reactions, we'll move on to the method of sections. Minus. Minus. Yeah. So now we'll look at the, the method of sections. Personally, I think it's better to draw out the truss again where it's been cut through and then we're considering the left hand side <coughs> so we're covering just the left hand side so this is the left hand side of the of the truss and our L is 7.5. We've got these two one kilonewton forces and we ignore everything else on the left hand side of the um, of where we cut through. So again we've just cut through that point there. Where you cut through members you consider them as external forces so we now don't know what FH is, GH is or GI. And we are guessing the arrow directions so guess If you wanted to have a, a, you know, a good stab at trying to guess the, the correct arrow directions um, first time, you, you could sort of look at taking moments around particular points. For example, if I, if I took moments around this point here, I would remove those there. So if, if this truss was going to be moving around clockwise, this one would be sending it around that way. This 7.5 would be pushing it this way. So this force would have to be going to the left hand side to try and stop it from spinning. So that um, arrow direction is likely to be correct. Um, then looking at sort of um, vertical, if we've got 7.5 going up and we've got two ones coming down, that's horizontal so we ignore that it's my guess that these both should be pointing upwards um, so at this time uh, if, if it was me when I was guessing the arrow directions I would be guessing that GH would be pointing outwards or, or upwards but you know we'll, we'll, we'll carry on with this example how it is and, and see if it comes up with a minus which will confirm that our arrow directions are, the, are right, right or wrong um, one thing that we will need to know is some dimensions. So to work out this dimension here, we call that alpha. Looking at the overall, looking at the overall triangle, a truss, they say it's eight meters high and it's 15 meters sort of in between G and L. So if we do inverse tan, we find that alpha equals 28.07 degrees. We will also need this length, HI. <coughs> um, I'm, I'm not bothered which way you've come up with the right answer. <coughs> I 
I'll use similar triangles. Where we've got eight. Um, over 15 and you've got this distance HI and that will be over 10 so if you've got 8 over 15 equals HI over 10 length HI is 5.33 meters so I'm just trying to work out what that length HI is because I'll need it in my, cal in my calculations and I've just used similar triangles you, you know if, if you just want to use trigonometry then that's fine because you've got this angle alpha and you can work with that distance 10 work out what the the length is Right, we've got three unknowns. What we're going to do is um, is use our equilibrium equations, and you you'll find that if you do look at vertical and horizontal, you'll end up with um, some unknowns. And you can use simultaneous equations to solve them. But the easiest way to try and identify what these individual um, forces are is by taking moments and take moments around a position where there's two unknowns. And that will leave uh, just this force here. So to find FGI, we'll take moments around H. And by doing that, it rem I'll just put in brackets, removes FH and um, GH. So again, by taking moments around this point here, it removes those two and actually remove that one kilonewton also. <coughs> if we say that everything going around anti clockwise is positive, So I've got my, my finger over this and I've got a distance of 10 times by 7.5. So a distance of 10 times by 7.5. I've got minus 5 times by 1. And then I've got this distance, which I've worked out, and it's going that way, so it'll be minus that distance there is 5.33 times by FGI. All that equals zero. FGI. It's plus 13.13. So the plus means I've guessed the correct direction. So if, if GI is pointing to the left inside, it means we've got both our arrows pointing inside. So is that in tension or compression? So it's tension. So this is just my overall truss again. So you've already got this, and this is the um, <coughs> this is what I'm going to be um, using to work out sort of um, FH and and GH.
It was easy to take moments around this point because you know the distance to there. But in terms of when we're trying to work out what these <coughs> these forces are, sorry, I'll put the um, put that one up. It's easy to know that distance, but if we go to take moments around this point, because we have to know the perpendicular distance to FGH, it's, it's difficult to try and work out what that is unless you start knowing what the angles are. Um, and if we took moments around there, we've got 7.5 times by that distance, you've got one times by that distance. You'd have to work out that distance to um, GH. And then FH, you'd have to work out the perpendicular distance. So it's the distance from here to perpendicular of, of FH. It's, uh, it's awkward. So you'd have to try and sort of take moments around a few points to try and work out how we can find out the other unknowns. What we, we could do, we could take moments around L. If we took moments around L, we would ignore that one. We would ignore this. We would, uh, we would ignore FH. So we'd have one times by five plus one times by 10 then you've got to try and work out what the perpendicular distance is to this one here, but that's not a 90 degree angle. So you always have to work out to 90 degree angles. Now, what you can do, you can split each member into its horizontal and vertical components. So this FH, it's, it comprises of FH, and if that angle there was alpha, um, it would be cosine alpha, and and then we'd also have an FH sine alpha. So you can either represent that force as it is its um, diagonal, or the verticals in the um, the horizontal. And we'll, we'll use this example to try and show you how we can eliminate <coughs> the, um, the, the diagonal. So, <coughs> I've got FGH, FGI, and then this FH I've split into its cosine and sine components. So if I take moments around g equals zero, the reason I'm taking moments around g is that it will remove fgh. Again, I don't know what this um, I don't know what that distance is there, so I'm splitting that into horizontal and vertical. And you can and you can place these horizontal and verticals at any point along that line. I could I could have put them put put them here, but we'll, what we'll do we'll do it at this end at F. If we take moments around G, it removes. GH, it also removes GI, and where we're splitting FH at this point here, it also removes FH sine alpha, this part here. So what we're left with is our force, 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 and an FH cosine alpha. Personally, um, this type of thing does my head in because um, it's very, very difficult and um, <coughs> it's very, very difficult to try and know how to split your forces up. Um, it, if anything, there are not many calcs in these questions. It's about getting your head around how do I split it 
how do I arrange my forces so that I can eliminate them so I can work out what the unknowns are. <coughs> so if I'm taking a moment around G, I've got 7.5, uh, and we'll say that everything going around anti-clockwise is positive. 7.5 times by <coughs> distance, distance 15. <coughs> Minus one times by 10, that's this one here. Minus one times by the distance five. And then we know this distance, this is the, this is the middle of the truss, F, F, G, H. And we've got this distance eight. Yeah. And that's going around to the, that's going around Anti-clockwise will be plus <coughs> FH cosine alpha times by the distance eight all equals zero. Does that seem right? So again, I split this FH into two components and I'm analyzing it at this point you could have, you can analyze it at any, any point, as long as you know the distances to the, the individual components, and perpendicular distances. FH equals <coughs> minus Yes, what's FH? So it's actually it's, it's in um, compression. <coughs> so we'll now find. So we got we got that one, and we'll find GFGH. We're going to find FGH by splitting the component into horizontal and vertical. So we've got FGH sine beta and FGH cosine beta. To find out that angle, because we know that's 5.3, and we know that distance is five, you can have like sort of tan um, beta is gi over hi. These are the distances. So it's five over 5.33. Beta is um, is forty three point one five. In an assignment or an exam, I personally wouldn't get you to try and work out sort of awkward angles like this. It's um, and expect you to to work out the the forces within the individual members. So if you've got 43.15 there, that's a 90 degree. This distance, this um, angle here is 46.885. So where do you think we take moments around to try and find out what FGH is? So if we took moments around H, 
Yep, yeah, we'd um, remove that one, we'd remove this, and we'd end up with, we, we know the distance down to this one here, and we know the distance <coughs> to there, and we know the distances to those. Yep, yeah, so you could take it round H. Yep, so you could take moments around there. Um, most of the um, locations along this line, um, along this line here, would would take out FH. As long as you know the distances to these two horizontal and vertical components, I chose to take moments around L. This point here. The reason I'm taking moments around L is I removes FFH because it's passing through it. It also removes um, GI. Then also removes FGH sine beta. And it leaves this FGH cosine beta, and that's the that's the only unknown that we're trying to to find. So take moments around L. We've got. 5 times by 1 and then we've got plus 10 times by 1 plus and then we've got this cosine beta which is 15 FGH cosine beta equals zero. <coughs> FGH, we know what beta is, 43.15. FGH works out as minus 1.371 kilonewtons. Because it's minus, it means that F G H arrow is the wrong is pointing the wrong direction. So it should be um <coughs> you work out that it's in, in compression. <coughs> so have a go at method of joints. You don't have to follow where I take moments around. You know, someone mentioned there that you could have took moments around H. You can just prove to yourself that you can you can use this technique. And uh, and also have a go at the method um, of of sections for for this. So you can have a, have a go I, either way.